Welcome back to the channel guys. So today I want to take a look at the Retro Stone made by 8B Craft. Uh, they also made the Raspy Boy. So this unit was actually sent to me by a viewer named Harvey. Really do appreciate it, dude. He hit me up on a stream saying, hey, I want to send you a little birthday gift, uh, something you could play with on the crapper. And I was like, dude, you don't have to do that. That's cool. No, no, no. I'm going to send you something that's going to be pretty sweet. So I was like, cool, man. I'll, I'll check it out. This showed up and I was like, dude, that's pretty sweet. Really do appreciate it, man. And I've been messing with it for a few days. And today decided, you know what, let me go ahead and do a little video on this thing because I do find this really neat. I'm really appreciative to have it. I've actually been using it a lot, but it's something I do want to share with my community because there's some cons to this thing. <laughs> is it neat? Yes. Is it pretty cool? Yes. Is there some glaring issues? Of course. So in the package he sent me, got this little box here, came with a nice little five volt, 2.5 amp uh, micro USB charger here, which I really like these. Uh, the ones that are connected anyway. So I get a lot of these things uh, with like Raspberry Pi kits where they're, you know, removable and they have a little power switch on it. I, I actually really prefer these. I don't like misplacing everything and losing all the stuff. So this is really cool. Appreciate that. Definitely going to get some use out of this thing. Also in the box was some additional buttons with another uh, conductive pad uh, membrane there. So different options for colors and then a, a nice little screen protector. Haven't had a chance to put that on yet, but definitely going to take a look at that another time and pop it on this bad boy. So here is the box. Let's go ahead and take a little bit of a closer look. Pretty cool black and white box, retro stone. You know what you're getting yourself into. Retro fun starts here, right? There are little branding everywhere. Pretty cool little box. Um, nothing major, but back of the box gives you a bunch of information. You can play this thing on your TV up to five players, uh, PC computer mode. Not exactly sure what that's about. A little overview of some of the stuff on the unit. And then it does give you some of the specs here. So processor is an all winner H3 1.2 gigahertz four core processor. We have one gigabytes, uh, one gigabyte of Ram, 3000 milliamp hour battery, 3.5 inch LCD screen and then some measurements there for the actual unit. You get ethernet, ethernet, however you wanna say it. Anytime I say it, people are like, dude, you're saying it wrong. Oh my God, leave me alone, please. <laughs> Just kidding guys, but you get that. And you get a audio jack, a micro USB charge port, memory card slot, four USB 2.0s and an HDMI out port. Pretty cool stuff, so little information on the on that side of the box. Now let's just go ahead and open it up and take a look. So in the box, before we really get in there, you get this little operations manual. Nothing major on this thing. Um, it does give you a little diagram here just telling you what all the buttons, where everything's located on the unit, but you could just look at the unit and kind of figure it out. But, you know, I didn't even look at this when I started messing with it. So not really all that useful for the most part because everything is just health and safety warnings. Um, and then just telling you go to their website to figure out how to use everything and get started. And then it's repeated in like, I don't know, 20 different languages. So pretty much you're covered. In the box, we did get our unit here. Let me go ahead and set this aside. Now, also what came in the box was a 16 gigabyte little branded micro USB. I've already put it in there. Does not come with any software, so you do have to figure all that stuff out on your own, but little, mine came with a 16 gigabyte 8B Craft branded micro SD card. Um, you know, looked around, figured it out, uh, hit up my community on, you know, hey, is there a pre-made image out there, base image, and there is a supreme image out there. Uh, it's a base image. It's just pre-set up for the unit. There's no games or anything on it. You have to supply all that stuff yourself. But it was pretty nice because it worked right out of the box, just connected this to the internet, um, popped my games and some artwork on there, and was ready to go. No Wi-Fi though, so um, you can pop in like a little Wi-Fi dongle 
or use the Ethernet, Ethernet port, whatever, and be good to go. So 3.5 inch screen, you have uh, some LED indicators there for the battery. Your face buttons, A, B, X, Y, start and select. Everything feels pretty good. Um, the one thing, the D-pad, it, it does, it responds well. I've had no issues with it, but playing it for an extended period of time, I kind of feel like this grooved in area kind of like annoys my thumb after a while. Um, but there's the speaker grill. On the bottom, we have a little volume slider, uh, 3.5 millimeter jack. On this side, HDMI. And then we have three buttons for the LCD controls, pretty much just brightness, saturation, contrast, that kind of thing. Uh, this button here, not 100% what it does. Uh, in the little diagram, it does say it's GPIO PA1, so I guess you can just map that to something, um, but it doesn't do anything for me. So, I mean, maybe it does, but I haven't messed with it because I don't know what it's for. <laughs> uh, there's our charging port. Also, I'm not 100% what it's called. I know it says on the website, but it does have these little uh, these little metal prong thingies right here. And that's for some kind of like charging system, like a mat that you could just set it down and it will charge without plugging it in. Um, so that's kind of cool that it's there, but it was a little off-putting at first seeing those little things poking up. I was like, are those screws that are popping out? Like, what is that? But it's for charging, so pretty, pretty neat. Back of the unit, we have some additional buttons, you know, L and R, one and two, that kind of thing. So additional mappable buttons for you. Um, but with that base image, everything's already pre-set up and mapped. You don't have to do any configurations for USBs or Ethernet, Ethernet, whatever. And our power button. So we'll go ahead and power that on. Hopefully you can see the LED there. Uh, we're at, you know, 100%. Let me kind of try to get in a little bit closer here so you can see takes a moment to boot up um, but when it boots up and you start seeing the screen that's kind of when you start seeing the issues that a lot of people have with this thing so it is using a composite connection to this LCD screen and if you're accustomed to seeing composite signals sent to LCD screens it looks like garbage <laughs> so pretty much any text that's going to be displayed on this screen it's gonna be fairly blurry, and if it's small text, it's gonna be fairly hard to, to read. So that's probably one of the biggest complaints for people. Um, you have to find a theme that just like really works and has bold you know, lettering and images and all that kind of stuff. For me, playing these games on here, I have actually really enjoyed this thing, but the glaring issue of this screen, it, it sucks. I mean, there's no other way to say it. This screen sucks. It's not even the screen. It's just the way they set it up. Um, I guess just space permitting. I'm not sure what the actual screen is, but using that composite signal just is, is really bad for, for you know a system like this. Um, I don't really understand if there was another way to do it. But me, I've been playing just strictly handheld games on this thing. I really don't have a desire to play PlayStation 1 or Super Nintendo games, just handheld games. So I have like Atari Lynx, Game Gear, uh, the Neo Geo Pocket stuff. I don't have any Game Boy stuff on here because I have Game Boys that are modded and every game that I would ever want for them anyway. So I just kind of put some stuff that I wanted to mess around with on here. And here we go. Take a look at a Game Gear game. If you're used to using RetroPie on uh, emulation station, everything's gonna be fairly familiar using you know th th these, these images that are made for this device. Um, pretty much just a retro orange pie, you know, modified for this thing. Uh, you know, because you gotta make sure everything looks right as far as the screen. The other thing, I don't know how apparent it is, but the screen, there's kind of like a waviness or flicker. I don't know how to describe it, but it's just because of that composite signal. And for some people, it's really freaking annoying. Um, a lot of people complained about the Raspy Boy. It seems like a split thing. A lot of people either really dig these devices or they just hate them. Um, I've heard of a lot of people, you know, when I was hitting them up in my uh, Facebook group, you know, seeking some assistance on like, hey, how do I get this set up? That kind of thing. Uh, people were like, man, I sold mine. Like, I couldn't stand it. <laughs> It's gone. I couldn't get any help. 
uh, the creator of this, you know, some people had some negative things to say. I've never dealt with this company. I'm not going to personally knock the guy who, who runs this company because I don't know anything about it. But I've just heard a lot of people complaining. And it's just, you know, it is what it is. The unit feels good. Mold injected, you know, plastic. It feels good. It looks good. But this screen is, it's just the visuals are garbage. And there's nothing you could do about it. I've, I've checked to see, can you put a new screen in there? And there's people doing modifications and stuff. But it's just like a lot of crazy things. Um, and it's just, you just have to accept what it is. These things are going for like $150 to $180. And you would expect, you know, the screen to look a little nicer than this. But let me give you a... Let me give you a sample of the, the speaker. The speaker is actually pretty loud. <laughs> that was that was all the way up. I'm going to turn it down. Pretty loud speaker. It sounds fine. Um, the games respond well. They play well. But definitely, um, the visuals, it, it's just going to be a bit blurry. Uh, you know, if you have text in these games and it's small, it's not going to look great. If they're ha The reason why I'm just playing handheld games is because a lot of these older handheld games were designed for fairly crappy displays, in a sense. Um, and they used large font and, and things like that. And I just, I really don't have any desire to play console games in handheld mode. Uh, I just want to play handheld games in handheld mode. That's just, that's just the way I am. But this thing is definitely capable to play a lot of systems. Um, very comparable to a, a Raspberry Pi 3. So you can keep that in mind. Uh, there's definitely resources out there to look at all the systems that are supported, but it's it's fairly similar to RetroPie on a Raspberry Pi 3. Um, let's go ahead and exit out of that. And as you see, like the I started getting some like crazy distortions. Yeah, I don't I don't know why it was like getting real wavy down the middle there for a second there. Something something might have jolted uh, some power through that screen. I, I don't know. Kind of kind of strange stuff. But yeah, this pre-made this pre-made uh, base image. A lot of cool stuff. All the loading screens and you know background music playing. It, it's it's pretty cool. Nice little starter thing to mess with. All right, let's just let's just get into this game. But you see, it's just, man, it's so hard to... <laughs> it's just so hard to really appreciate the visuals for these games because the screen is just not great. This game's like not even... Not even displaying. Look at that screen. Did it just... I, I almost thought it died on me there. Yeah, there's something funky going on there. Yeah, I don't know. This is the first time I've seen it do that, so it's kind of catching me off guard a, a little bit there. Not sure what the heck the the point of that was. Very strange. Yeah, I don't I don't know what the heck. You know, I didn't bump it or anything. It's got to be some kind of power surge going on there. I'm pretty sure. Maybe it's because the battery's draining. The battery's draining a bit. I probably just gotta charge this thing up. I've been using it quite a bit and didn't charge it. But there, just wanted to kind of give you guys an idea of this thing. I do really enjoy using it um, just for these handheld games. Would I recommend buying one of these for $150 to $180? No, <laughs> I, I wouldn't. I'm really appreciative that this was sent to me. Um, I mean, there's that. It's, it's, why can't I start this? Oh, there we go. I was pressing the wrong button, but yeah, my battery's got to be dying because that screen is, is really jolting around a little bit. That's kind of odd. At least I hope it's just the battery. I'll have to, I'll have to plug it in. But there's some Neo Geo Pocket Color before we go. So really do appreciate you guys stopping in, hanging out with me for a little while, looking at this thing, despite some of these, uh, the weirdness going on here. I have been enjoying it. I really do appreciate it. Thank you, Harvey, for sending this to me. Um, you didn't have to, but you did, and I really do appreciate it. 
So thank you. I am going to be getting quite a bit of use out of this thing. Hopefully this flickers just because of the battery. That's kind of nuts. I'm going to find out right now. I'll post something in the description. I'm going to charge this up a little bit um, after I end this video and give you a heads up on that. Because that, that is kind of crazy, right? I don't know why it's doing that. That could just be the battery. could be something else. Hopefully it's just the battery. But thank you guys. And I will catch you all next time. Peace out. Bye-bye. And boom!